Hello everyone, welcome back to Combat Made Easy and I hope you all are doing very well. Before we begin, let me remind my dear students that the contents of this channel are only to supplement your knowledge, not to replace the regular online and offline classes in your institution. So please attend your classes and do not miss them. Also, if you like our contents, please subscribe to our YouTube channel, like the videos and share these videos with your friends, with your batchmates, with your juniors. Also, if you are a teacher, then with your students. Please follow our Facebook page and the link will be given in the description. Today we are going to learn data presentation in tabular form. That means how can the finding of any study can be presented in tables. Data can be presented in the form of tables or in the form of diagrams, which can be bar diagram, histogram, pie chart, line diagram etc there are many variables of uh, diagrammatic presentation which will be discussed in the future classes in tabular presentation data are arranged systematically and in logical sequence in rows and columns so if we look at any table we can find there are multiple rows multiple columns properly constructed tables help us understand the data and facilitate comparison. So if a table is constructed properly, sometimes we can uh, get the difference between the findings of two different groups. So that is why uh, it sometimes help us uh, making the comparison. What are the essentials of a good table? Table number should be there. The title has to be given. Total number of subjects must be mentioned. Proper construction of the table is very much important column and row headings must be there in the table and there should be logical sequence followed now all these points will be discussed individually from the next slide first is the table number sometimes what happens uh, whenever we conduct a study and present the data in tabular form we may have to prepare or make more than one table so if we have more than one table it is ideal that we give number to each table so tables should be numbered sequentially and whenever we writing the result we can refer to the table by its number so according to table number two the finding was this or according to table number four uh, the finding we got from our study is this so table number should be mentioned so here we have written here table number one or table one followed by a dot this is followed by the title of the table title should be self-expressive and not too long that means concise and descriptive so title should be short not too short also not very long and it should be self-expressive that means whenever a person uh, reads the title of the table he should be able to understand what is expressed in the table he do not need to look at the table directly from the title itself he should be able to understand that title is always at the top of the table so i tell my students to remember this mnemonic t40 so table title is at top so whenever we construct or we uh, make a table the title of the table should be above the table so here we have mentioned the title of the table that is the distribution of undergraduate students according to body weight so that means from this title we have understood that we have measured the body weight of certain students which are who are the undergraduate students and we have grouped them or categorized them so that is why distribution of undergraduate students according to body weight next point is the total number of subjects so total number of subjects represented in the table must be mentioned the number of subject is written at the end of the table so let us look at the example here so after the table number the title of the table we have mentioned the total number of subjects that is within the first bracket capital n equal to 200 now remember you will come across lot of tables in a uh, lot of different books or journals or articles where small n is sometimes used generally small n represent the sample and capital n represent the total number of population but uh, these are sometimes used interchangeably so uh, read the article what they're talking about and what they did in their study for our example we have uh, mentioned the total number of subjects that is 200 this is followed by proper construction of the table 
टेबिल शुड बी सिंपली कंस्ट्रक्टेड अ सिंपल लुकिंग टेबिल इज ऑलवेज मोर अपीलिंग एवॉइड ड्रॉइंग द ग्रीड लाइन्स देयर शुड बी प्रेफरेबली थ्री हॉराइजोंटल लाइन्स एंड आई हैव पुट टू एस्टेटिक मार्क्स बिसाइड दिस uh two sentences because these are not mandatory there are lot of tables we will come across where lot of grid lines are there and more than three horizontal lines are there so this is not absolutely necessary so just to uh make the example here here we have drawn only three grid lines which are the uh, parallel lines and no other lines have been uh, drawn column and row headings is very important because from the column heading and the row heading we can understand what variable or what finding have been presented in the column or in the rows so proper column and row heading should be given unit of measurement should also be mentioned suppose i am measuring something measuring the weight of something so it should be mentioned whether this measurement was done in kilogram or gram or pound whatever similarly in case of uh, length or height it should be mentioned whether it is suppose we are measuring the height of a person so it should be mentioned whether the height was taken in inch or in centimeter because the values will be different in that case certain terminologies that we should understand stub which represents the row characteristic of the table caption represent the column characteristic of the table body represent only the numeric part of the table we shall we shall show this thing uh, in later part of the presentation so here we have put the row heading and the column heading so these are the column heading number of students that means the frequency we have measured that means how many student belong to each body weight group and the percentage so these two are the columns and these are the column heading here also in this part we shall be mentioning the uh, different body weights suppose 40 to 50 kg 50 to 60 kg 60 to 70 kg so these are basically my row so that is why this is the row title next is logical sequence should be mentioned so items should be arranged sequentially or in chronological order here as you can see the body weight which were measured in kilogram and the different range are 50 to 60 kg 60 to 70 kg 70 to 80 kg 80 to 90 and then 90 to 100 kg so there is a logical sequence of this uh, variable the body weight we could write 50 to 60 the next row could be 80 to 90 then uh, suppose 60 to 70 90 to 100 so that would be haphazard that is why we have uh mentioned it in ascending order that means uh in increasing order and that is why we can say we have maintained a logical sequence after that we have also mentioned different uh body weight and the number of student belonging to that body weight so from this table we can see that there are 10 students belonging to 50 to 60 kg body weight that means 10 students had their body weight in between 50 to 60 kg 50 students had body weight in between 60 to 70 kg and like this so we had a total of 200 students and here the percentages are mentioned so 10 student out of 200 is basically 5% similarly 50 students out of 200 is 40 uh, 25% so like this they should be 100% now let us look at the different part of the tables so we know this is the table number table 1 this is followed by the title and the number of subjects is mentioned at the end of the title caption represents the characteristic of the column now let us go back here if you remember represent the column characteristic so that is caption whereas stub represent the row characteristic so we are coming back here so these are the row characteristic these are the stub and this is known as stub head which is basically the row heading and body represents the numerical portion of the table so all these numbers are my body but 
you have to understand whenever we are constructing a table the table number should be given followed by the title number of subjects that column and row heading should be given logical sequence should be followed that's enough now there are different types of table for example simple table that describes only one set of characteristic complex table on the other hand describes more than one set of characteristics so let me give you an example so this is the first example which i have already shown here only one characteristic have been uh, presented or described in this table which is the body weight right so body weight and the number of students followed by that so since only one variable or one characteristic have been described in this table that is why this is a simple table if we look at the next example here also we have the body weight and the number of students but if you look carefully we have also introduced the gender of the students the boy students and the girl students so we can say that in this table there are two variables which have been expressed or presented first is the body weight second is the gender of the student since two or more than two characteristic or variables have been expressed in this table that is why this is a complex table next we are going to focus a little bit on the quantitative data uh, presentation in tabular form if data are quantitative that means the characteristic itself can be measured and also the frequency can be measured then the entire data set is divided into number of groups or classes these individual groups or classes are known as group interval or class interval each class interval has an upper limit and a lower limit which are known as the class limits the difference between upper and lower limits are called class width number of items that come under a class is known as class frequency or simply known as frequency this type of table is referred to as frequency distribution table so sometimes as a part of statistical exercise we ask our students to draw, draw a frequency distribution table uh, from a given set of data now this frequency distribution table can be of two types open ended class interval or close ended class interval so this is based on the uh, type of class interval so one end of the class is not specified for example less than 20 years or more than 60 years so less than 20 years can mean 0 to 20 years 15 to 20 years 10 to 20 years the lower limit is not mentioned similarly more than 60 kg can actually mean 60 to 100 years or 60 to 70 years or 60 to 80 years this is known as open ended class interval because one end of the class is open here close ended class interval mentions both the limits that means the class limits are specified and fixed for example 30 to 35 years 50 to 55 years etc what are the rules of making a frequency distribution table the class interval should not be too narrow or too broad number of classes should not be too many or too few the class interval should be same throughout so if suppose you are talking about age if one of the class interval is 40 to 50 years that means a range of 10 years then the next class interval should be 50 to 60 years not 50 to 80 years so that will be 30 years that will be a different thing so that is why the class interval should be same classes should be tabulated in ascending or descending order so logical sequence should be mentioned and this part we discussed earlier so here i have given an example the serum triglyceride level of 30 patients were assessed the result in mgdl or milligram per deciliter are as follows so we have 30 different values here this is my data set we are asked to prepare a frequency distribution table with the data set first thing we can do is uh, we can arrange this serum triglyceride level of the 30 patients in ascending order so that means starting from the lowest value gradually increasing to the highest value so as you can see we have as low as 171 and as high as 243 so that is mentioned here and the difference between the lowest and highest value is 72 now we can make a class interval of 
so this you can decide you could make it 15 you could make it 20 or you could make it as low as 5 if you make a class interval of 5 there will be a lot of rows so anyway we have uh, taken a class interval of 10 for our example so that means 170 to 180 181 to 190 191 to 200 like this so after this the first thing that we are supposed to do is write the table number and what we are going to show in our table that is the title of the table so frequency distribution of patients according to level of triglyceride and n is equal to 30 because 30 patients uh, they are finding have been presented in this table next coming to the uh, row column and the uh, sorry uh, row title and the column title so the column titles are frequency and percentage and we also have made a column for tally mark which will actually help us in counting the frequencies this is the row and in individual row we have the range with 10 class interval uh, this is the serum triglyceride level like 171 to 180 181 to 190 191 to 200 like this up to 250 because the highest value we have is 243 so that will be in this in this range or in this class so when we have 171 the look the first one is 171 to 180 so 1 2 3 4 no i am sorry 1 2 3 these three value uh, fall in this 171 to 180 so that is why you have put three tally mark here the next one is 181 to 190 we have 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 so that is why 5 plus 3 so tally marks can be given if you use tally mark you actually do not need to arrange this data set in ascending or descending order you can keep it haphazard as given in the problem uh, but uh, if you arrange them in ascending or descending order in that case you do not even need to use the tally mark so anyway after uh, you know drawing all this tally mark counting the frequencies we have about three subjects or three patients whose triglyceride level is in between 170 and uh, 180 eight patients in between 181 and 190 like this so at the end of the exercise we have 30 patients and at a different level of triglyceride where the class interval of 10 is taken we have different number of patients and also obviously the percentages have also been mentioned here so this is the complete table now this is very important and this is something which i have seen lot of students making this mistake so we have two different tables actually we have only drawn a part of the table right so this is suppose the uh, row title so this is body weight 1 to 10 kg 11 to 20 kg 21 to 30 kg here also we have another table or we can say the row title which is 10 to 0 to 10 kg 10 to 20 kg or 20 to 30 kg suppose you have a number of children and we want to know uh, which children belong to which uh, body weight category or class so as you can see there is a little bit difference between these two tables here whenever i'm mentioning table i actually mean the column i row title all right so the first one is 1 to 10 11 to 20 21 to 30 and like this we could uh, go even further here in the second table we have 0 to 10 10 to 20 20 to 30 so as you can see in this table 10 is mentioned here as well as here 20 is mentioned here as well as here right suppose there is a child with body weight of 10.5 so the question is where we will put 10.5 this is a problem in case of the first table we can see we have 1 to 10 and then 11 to 20 but there is no mention of something between 10 to 11 right so we have 10 here and we have 11 here so 10.5 lies somewhere between 10 and 11 so in that case where we are going to put 10.5 the second question is problematic for the second table where will we put 
20 kg so 20 is here as well as 20 is here so are we going to consider 20 in the 10 to 20 category or 20 to 30 category so that is the question now let us try to understand the meaning of this kind of class intervals in first example 1 to 10 actually means 1 to 10.999 that means up to 11 so since the next value or the lowest value in the next class is 11 so this class will actually include all data starting from 1 up to any value just before 11 so that is why 10.999 it could be 99999 multiple times but since we are expressing in kg and we can go up to grams so that is why three decimals have been considered so even though this says 10 it actually means up to 11 that means 10.999 in this case in the second example okay i will go to the second example later so where will we put 10.5 kg in this table so since 1 to 10 actually means up to 10.999 so 10.5 is lower than 10.99 so that is where 10.5 will be in the 1 to 10 kg class interval so this one and what about 20 of course 20 will be here because 11 to 20 means 11 to 20.999 so 20 will be in this class interval so that is why 20 kg will be in 11 to 20 kg class interval now what about the second table 0 to 10 means 0 up to the lowest value of the next class interval so the next class interval is 10 to 20 the lowest value here is the 10 so 0 to 10 actually means 0 up to 10 not including the 10 so up to 10 means 9.999 that is why 10.5 will be here 10 to 20 because of course it starts from 10 up to 20.99 so 10.5 is more than 10 so there is no question that 10.5 should be in this class interval 10 to 20 kg what about 20 this 20 actually does not mean 20 we have learned here this 20 means actually 10 point sorry i am sorry 10 to 19.999 20 is actually here so 10 to 20 class interval means 10 to 19.999 and this class interval means 20 to 29.999 so that is why the 20 kg will be in the 20 to 30 kg class interval now the first kind of table is known as inclusive type and the second kind of table is known as the exclusive type so please remember what is inclusive type of class interval what is exclusive type of class interval and if you are given this kind of class interval don't get confused about where to put 10.5 or 20.5 like this or if you are given this kind of class interval do not forget or do not get confused about where to put the value of 10 or 20 so 10 will be here 10 to 20 and 20 will be here 20 to 30 so with this we conclude today's session on table if you like our video please subscribe to our channel and share this video with your batchmates, juniors and friends from other colleges. We also have our Facebook page that you can follow. The link is given in the description. Take care and we shall see you in our next video.